I've got three specialists on catching foul balls in the stands. And I want you to meet them. You are... Hi, my name is Bob Mopesh from Stevens Point, Wisconsin. You are... Randy Weevil, Stevens Point, Wisconsin. Tim Sullivan, Stevens Point, Wisconsin. Now, you work in a three-man team or is somebody missing? No, we have a three-man team. We've had it for approximately the last eight years. What if one of you get hurt? You got replacements? We've got a couple young kids coming up through our farm system. Do you watch people catch foul balls and say, hey, that's a prospect? If we, we can... somebody drop a foul ball, we say that is a yeah. prospect. I see. You do that. Well, it depends on uh, who's eating. If kids eat, eats all the time, you don't want them. Uh, for instance, Ma, one of the main rules in foul ball catching is you can't have your hands full of something. So anybody who is constantly munching on something or going to the restroom or buying a program or something like that, we wouldn't look at. Okay, now the system. First, explain the system. What is your job, Ma? I get in the way of as many people as I can, as quick as I can. Politely. Blocker, yes. What do you do, Randy? I'm a chaser, more or less. If a ball's hit, uh, I try to get a pick from Ma. This is just like in basketball, a pick and a roll. He sets about the best pick this side of Wes Hunt, so. Okay, I got it set up. We've got a designated foul ball fungo hitter just for you. <laughs> okay, Schultz. We've always liked Joel Schultz. Like the ball's hit say, to the left here. You get out in the aisle. Tim and I will already be gone, and you'll set a pick on the people coming from this side of the stadium or down. Where a block am I? Hang nice out. pick, mother. Hey, what? what kind of equipment do you have? Well, first of all, everybody should bring a glove. And uh, like today, we're all wearing hats, as you can see, because we're out in the sun field in Detroit. Uh, we don't have the sunglasses today, but uh, you've got to battle the sun. And we've also got a ball retriever here. And I brought this thing, uh, the golf ball retriever used for ponds. Now, you're out here mighty, mighty early. They're taking batting practice. There's hardly anybody in the stands. What time do you usually get to the ballpark? We try to get here as soon as the gates open. Gives us a chance to get the ball. Where do you like to sit? For batting practice, it's mostly down the lines. Do not get but usually if there's an opening in the corner, that's the spot to be usually, we think. Yeah. So you scout the ballparks. Which is the best ballpark? Minnesota's where we made our killing. That was our first ballpark. What type pitcher is the best pitcher for you? One that doesn't throw a lot of strikes. <laughs> Actually, not a strikeout pitcher. Like well, if, we do, if we do a fastball pitcher... Hunter is an excellent type of pitcher. He doesn't strike out a lot of people, and the ball uh, is always being hit. The ball's in play a lot. The worst thing that can happen to you is when a manager calls off batting practice, huh? Definitely. One of the main things, Joe, is I think that uh, if you're going to the game, you got to make sure your team's at home. <laughs> yeah, that would help you. Little things like that. It's pretty hard to get a foul ball uh, when nobody's there. <laughs> Did you ever do that? Uh, yeah, we ended up in Milwaukee a couple weeks ago, and the Rolling Stones were there. <laughs> so what'd you catch? Uh, a couple of hours, couple hours of uh, the Rolling Stones. <laughs> That's just about it. Now comes the moment of truth. Our heroes are ready to prove that for Boy Scouts and foul ball chasers, the motto is be prepared. These three even have their own scouting reports. Why loving pitching, I would assume that their left-handed hitters might have a better shot at hitting the ball down here anyway. It's the right hand. Horn's the kind of guy you need two gloves for in goalie equipment. Does anybody know anything about this pitcher for any choice? Is fair? At all? First time I think he's a uh, right-hander. And we figured that out when he took the mound, so... He's got his glove on his left hand. Well, I gave it away. What are you doing? You told me you're not supposed to eat when you're catching foul balls. I uh, know. I just broke a cardinal rule, but I have to have one. These are pretty good seats right here. Yeah, they are, but I'd rather be sitting on left field. I don't understand it. Why they wouldn't let us in there? We've got one guy sitting out there. How come we can't get out there? Taste it yeah, out. How did he get in there? He brought out the whole section. Looks like a typical fan to me. Yeah, he didn't catch anything either. <laughs> Pressure's on you. Ninth inning, one man out. You don't have one yet. They don't have a whole section brought out either. 
We've been shut out by Bly Levin before. This is nothing new. Uh, he eats better against left-handers, and uh, apparently we catch foul balls better against left-handers. You did pretty good in batting practice, though, but you haven't had a chance during the game. What happens if you go home empty-handed? Well, we'll just stop at a souvenir stand and buy one of them dollar twenty-five baseballs and tell everybody in Stevens Point, Hank Aaron hit it. Oh, this could be it. So we find that like players or umpires, foul ball chasers can have slumps too. But we don't want you to miss out on seeing a fan catch a foul ball. Watch this heartwarming drama. And what a thrill for Daddy. He caught a foul ball in front of his son. Now Junior has a baseball and a moment to cherish. Or has he? To the rescue comes this nice lady who retrieves the baseball, and our scene ends with Danny and Junior and their baseball all back together again. Well, if that's a sample of how that youngster's luck is going to run, guarantee you he's a winner. And winners are what we're going to be talking about right after this. What you doing, Dad? Putting Xerox antifreeze in. Then what happens? The way Xerox protects, most likely nothing. Nothing? That's right. No freeze-ups, no summer boil-overs, no rust that'll clog things up. I get it, Dad. Yeah? Sure, when nothing bad happens to our radiator, that's good. Smart guy. Xerex, it's very good at stopping what's very bad for your radiator. For about 500,000 years, man has tried to be master of the water. Now, man has the upper hand with Black Max from Mercury. 175 horsepower. The most powerful production outboard we've ever built. Built to last. Built to take on the toughest water. And there's a bit of the Black Max in every Mercury. Mercury. Power and performance you can depend on.